Oh look, it's not a smith for once. Maybe I'll save you that intro thing before the intro. Nah, sit tight, I'll show you what's in here. Alright, so thank you for putting up with my bizarre introductions, yeah? So this is... Uh, Genesis. Actually, no it isn't. This is the Ruger Super Red Hawk Alaskan in 454 Casul. You might notice that this is a bit shinier than the one you have, or the one you may be wanting to buy. And that's because I took this gun apart. Actually, <laughs> I liked this gun so much, I bought two of them. That's the second one. I've got a story about the first one. Anyway, I just realized that I forgot to unload it, so let me go ahead and do that first. We'll talk about the specs and the details first. This is in 454 Casul. This is what I carry in it, 454 Casul. It holds six rounds. Sorry about that. But it does hold six rounds of 454 Casul get these over here. I run a Hornady XTP 300 grain bullet for these. It's got the four cutouts for the hollow point to expand. Six beans in the wheel. Super shiny because I like to keep my wheel guns very clean. And because it's a Ruger, you push the button in instead of going that way on a Smith or that way on a Colt. This is the first gun I owned that came with a Hogue Tamer grip. And it has a unique one because the gel insert in here is dark blue where all my Smith ones are just black, just like the outside. So, this has a two inch barrel, two and a half, I think, because you start at the cone and you work your way forward. It is heavily shrouded. The cylinder is made out of carpenter steel to handle the pressures of 65,000 PSI for these rounds. And uh, my only complaint with it is the hammer, actually. It's a little too small for me. I've been thinking about switching it out with a Blackhawk hammer, which is more wide at the back. And I heard it's a direct replacement, so. Why did I get two of these? Why did I get one of these? Well, first of all, just look at it. This thing's a monster. It's got that big, thick, flat top strap that goes all the way down the barrel shroud. She's a monster. This thing weighs at least three and a half pounds empty. It's all steel. It's heavy. She's a big girl. She's got big hips. She's got a nice barrel shroud. She polishes up beautifully. This is just mother's polish. Look at all those coon rings. I didn't even try to clean them this time. You can tell I shoot this a lot though. <laughs> anyway, this is a little bit of work with mother's polish and a Dremel with a felt wheel. But beauty about Rugers are they're so overbuilt and so simply built. You can have this whole gun taken apart to its bare components in less than a minute. Seriously, you just take that screw out, you pop out the mainspring, side plates, you know, this, this pin comes out. Everything falls apart nice and easy on one of these. And the beauty of that is, is this actually comes apart just like a vintage Ruger, which will be in another video that I own in a much smaller caliber. Some of you may recognize this gun. Some of you movie aficionados. And some of you might notice that I collect a lot of guns that Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, used in movies. And he used that one in the movie Faster, which came out, I believe, in 2010. And uh, it left an impression on me. I bought that gun literally the day after I saw the movie. And then I, I kind of worked my way into it. This is actually the fourth gun I've ever bought, or the mod, this model is the fourth gun I ever owned. The second, I bought this gun twice, but the first time I bought it, it was the fourth gun that I ever owned. And uh, I started off small. You know, I went from the mag, I had the 44 Magnum, but just in case, I loaded 45 Colts with these for a little while, just so I can get used to it, because, you know, much shorter barrel, so it's gonna wanna kick up a lot. So I did that, and then I bought a box of 454 Casuals, which were very hard to find just off the shelf. It's not exactly like a well-stocked round. Bought a box of 20 for like $50. <laughs> Took that to the range, and uh, I candy cane loaded it, so I put in 
four 45 Colts, one 454 Casul, and a 45 Colt at the end again. So I fired pop, 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 bang, pop. And there's a difference. Good Lord, is there a difference. But man, is that recoil and that sound intoxicating. So anyway, the first time I shot it, the concussion was so strong that I actually got a nosebleed. And my friend that was sitting there with me, when I turned around, he saw the blood dripping off my chin. And I didn't know it at the time until I looked at the concrete below me. He says, are you okay? And I was like, that was so cool. Let's do it again. He's like, you're bleeding. And I was like, oh, well, okay, whatever. So cotton ball up the nose and just kept shooting. Went through that whole box, came home, bought the reloading dies. This is also the second caliber that I started reloading for. The 44 Magnum was the first. But anyway, there's really not a lot I can talk about with this gun except the story part of it. So I saw the movie, I bought this. Uh, my friend had moved to Alaska. He, and, he went on vacation up there and he liked it so much that he came back here and asked me to help him move up there. So I did, which gave me a free trip. And uh, he decided to stay. And he didn't own any guns aside from like nine mils and 22s. And I said, wait, are you supposed to be a park ranger of some sort here? And he goes, yeah, you can call it that. I'm a glorified park ranger here. And uh, I said, okay, well, uh, you're going to need something to protect yourself out here, you know? And he says, yeah, everyone told me, like, the, the minimum you want to carry out in this area is 44 Magnum. So anyway, uh, I let him shoot it. And, you know, I hung out for about a week. And every morning, I noticed something happened. There was, like, a small moose of some sort that would walk across like around his front yard and out in the pastures and stuff and every day i would see it walk across i'd get up and this is back when i had you know i used to smoke so i'd get up and i'd grab a cup of coffee i'd stand out in his front porch with a cigarette and a cup of coffee and i'd watch this thing walk across and he parked his truck at the very end of his property near the street because his driveway is kind of gravel and dirt and he never wants to get stuck so he was like i just leave it right there and uh, every day I would see the same thing. And on the last day before I was getting ready to go back home, I stepped outside and that moose, I think it was a moose, it was on the hood of his truck and there was a bear eating it. <laughs> like eating it or beginning to eat it. It was already dead, but I mean, I don't know if he dragged it up there or what. I wasn't privy to that conversation. All I know is I stepped outside I was holding my cigarette and I dropped it as he walked out the door and he says, what's going on? And I just kind of pointed out to his truck and he goes, oh Jesus, what do we do? So I told him, I said, go to my room and go grab the Ruger. So he did. He came out, he fired three shots into the air and that bear took off. So as soon as I saw him do that, I said, you know what? You should probably keep this. I said, consider it a housewarming gift. So I wrote him a bill of sale saying I just handed it over to him. He signed it, I signed it, and I went home. Got home, got homesick, got gun sick, and went to the first gun show the next weekend, bought another one. <laughs> so this is actually my fourth and fifth gun. Anyway, um, I think that's really all I've got for you. Trigger pull and stuff on this is pretty, I guess you would call it standard. I mean, single action on this, probably about three pounds. It's a, you got to put a little bit of more gusto behind it, but it's very crisp, very crisp. You can hear that metallic noise to it too. This is a transfer bar gun, so dry firing is not a big deal. Double action. This one's pretty heavy too. I'd say it's at least eight to nine pounds. I would actually give you a trigger gauge reading, but I tried to use that on a Nagant revolver one time and it broke it and I've never replaced it. But anyway, yeah, it's pretty heavy. This one does three clicks, just like the Colt. So to advance the cylinder, engage the cylinder lock, and then lock against the sear, and then off you go. But yeah, these guns clean up beautifully. I didn't do anything but mothers and the polishing wheel. Tamer's very comfortable. I think the most rounds I've shot out of this in one sitting was 250 rounds. And then I just got fatigued because I'm getting old and arthritis is a bitch. So there it is, the Ruger Super Red Hawk Alaskan. They even brag about it on the frame, right there, on the barrel shroud. Very clean, very, very pretty. They're super nice. The other really cool thing about these is, 
is Ruger pressure tests these guns to two and a half times over maximum, or no, sorry, one and a half times over maximum pressure. 90, 95,000 PSI. You're, you can't load it hot enough <laughs> to do that. Like, I don't know how they did it. I, I'm not even gonna try, but it, it can take it. So it's built like a tank, it looks like a tank. It was used by The Rock, which is not a tank. I don't know, it's arguable, I guess. You can usually get these for around, well, when I bought in, I was able to get one for, the first one I got for 800. This one I paid 840 at the time. It got a little bit more expensive over the years, but uh, it's still available. And the really cool thing is, is this style of frame, this larger frame Ruger, they use the same setup to make an eight shot version of a 357 uh, in a Red Hawk, a regular Red, or Super Red Hawk frame. So you can get this in an eight shot 357, which is pretty nice. I kind of want one. I just haven't got off my ass to buy one. Also, if you want one longer, uh, they offer a Talo edition or a limited edition version. It's called the Toklat, T-O-K-L-A-T. It comes with a five inch barrel and it's got the scope ring mounts on top. And I think they make an even longer one, but I can't remember the name of that one. I think it's just Super Red Hawk Alaskan again, but it's got like a six inch barrel or a, it's pretty long. It almost looked like they took the original gun and just cut it off here and bobbed it and polished out the crown, but I bought this one because movies. Yeah. So anyway, uh, this is the gun that was replaced by the 500 backpacker. Like, I still have this one, but if I go to Alaska, I take the 500 now instead of this. But I do carry this sometimes in the winter under my jacket. And it was kind of funny because when I took my friend to the gun show with me to buy the second one, he asked me in front of the guy that was selling it to me, why do you need a 454 Casul? Why a caliber that big? And I simply looked at him and I said, because assholes come in all sizes. And as soon as I said that, the guy selling it to me just busted out laughing. He's like, yep, this gun is made for you. Let's start the paperwork. So, winter carry, kind of nice. You don't have to worry about what it punches through. Jackets, fat, blubber, you name it. That ain't gonna, nothing's gonna stop that. So, there it is. I hope you liked it. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're a regular here, welcome back. Maybe check out my other playlists, see if my other interests might be of interest to you. That's all I've got for you for this one, guys. Pretty quick and dirty. Same backdrop. I'm filming all these at once. Even kept the paperwork for this one. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Later.